I think it's important to build a children's ministry on a biblical foundation because what they learn as children is going to stick with them most of the rest of their life. And it's much easier to teach them foundationally at an early age the biblical truths as opposed to having to go back later on in life trying to undo those uh, and then trying to redo. And it's just a whole lot of work and it's much better and easier uh, long term if you can build a solid foundation biblically from the beginning with children. I would have to say the thing I, I like the most about the material, well, let me take that back. There are a couple things I like about it. One of the things I like is that it's laid out really easily. That if you read through the material and, and do your homework and really read through it, you can teach it with no problem. They have a lot of help with activities to do, with great illustrations. More than that, the thing I enjoy the most about the material is it is really gospel-centered and Christocentric and all that it does. And it tries to really teach the, the full breadth of scripture and not just random stories. One of the things that we saw at our children's camp last year, we used the CDG material, um, The Call of God. And um, it was just really exciting as we went through some of the illustrations about how God calls us, how there's nothing special about us, but God's call to us makes us special. And really seeing some kids come out of our camp and professing faith in Christ um, and talking to them. And they're, they're now leaders in our student ministry and asking them to go through their testimony when they became Christians. and. These are, this one girl in particular has been around church stuff all her life, but really said, you know, it was last year at camp as a 12-year-old that I really encountered Christ for the first time and understood that he was calling me to salvation. So that's been one of the greatest stories for me is seeing how the material based upon scripture and really Christocentric has impacted and changed the lives of my students. Um, a story about teaching um, God's Word to children. Um, well, I can tell you that um, even with my own children, um, Children Desiring God has been foundational in how um, I teach them. And um, I am so sorry. Do you want me to tell like a. Okay. What do I like about the CGC materials? Um, that it is 100% focused on Christ. And it is totally gets um, us away from ourselves. It gets children away from themselves. And it um, really retrains our thinking because we are so man-centered and we just think that way naturally because of our sin nature. And CGC prepares you and equips you on how to biblically get out of that way of thinking and then empower your children to get out of that way of thinking also. Uh, we just started a fifth and sixth grade ministry at our church called The Bridge, uh, a way to bridge the gap per se between children's ministry and the youth ministry to uh, help them feel more comfortable as they move in to the youth ministry, to teach them some things over the course of two years uh, that they'll use in their next phase of spiritual development. So. On one of these Friday nights, we were talking about meditation, and we took uh, the verse that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and just meditated on that. And one of the girls just gave an extremely amazing answer, really in-depth, uh, not a very churched uh, girl, not, not that the family doesn't go to church a lot, so it just tugged at my heart and made me as happy as I could be that this little girl was getting what we were talking about. Uh, this is what I tell the fifth and sixth graders that I teach, is that the most important thought you will ever think is what you think when you think of God. Meaning that if there are any errors in what you think about God, which is the foundation for everything else, then there will be errors in the way you think about everything that you encounter in your life. So it's important to have a firm foundation so that you can hopefully steer clear of errors in the way you think about all the other aspects of life. And so, what do you like about the CDG material? Uh, the one that we use now for the second and fourth graders, who I teach on Sunday school, is the In the Beginning Jesus. And one of the things that I like to emphasize to the teachers, the leaders, is that the Bible isn't a set of disconnected stories, but it's one story of the redemptive plan of God. And that particular curriculum starts in Genesis 
all the way to the end, showing the progression of God's plan and how it all points towards the Savior, be it the temple, the high priest, the sacrificial lamb, all of that's pointing to the great and merciful Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I can think of teaching God's Word to our own children and how we have a family devotion uh, in the mornings, usually uh, in about 10 o'clock in the middle of school. We take a break and we do family devotions. And uh, we've heard our children use what the Lord has taught them through that time and talking with each other. And uh, it's just a blessing to hear, hear your seven-year-old tell your five-year-old, that's not a fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you handle it this way, this would be more Christ-like. And that's such a blessing. Yeah, I think I would agree with her. Just seeing the gospel uh, come to bear in our own children's lives has probably been the, the biggest blessing. So just this past week, I uh, was able to take my son out on Tuesday night, just he and I and listen to him explain the gospel to me. Uh, it was really uh, encouraging. I sent her a text message while we were out, just what a blessing that was. But also to hear the gospel communicated from other students, uh, young kids in our church. And uh, our son wouldn't be the only one, obviously, but there's others. And uh, to have conversations with the parents about the gospel conversations that they have with their children. Uh, it's just encouraging to know that the gospel is uh, is having its effect on our, our children. Uh, it's really encouraging as a children's pastor uh, uh, of a church. Oh, well, because that's, uh, because it's hard to break something that's been built incorrectly. To try to fix something I think would be much harder. I know in my own life I was not um, taught to believe in a Christ. I didn't have a Christ-centered view uh, growing up and so it, it was just, it just seemed more difficult you know into adulthood uh, once I was converted how that was a little bit tougher being taught so many um, things from Scripture that weren't true. And um, I think that if we start at three weeks and <laughs> two years teaching them the, that a God-centered view of Scripture, that the whole Bible is about Jesus and it points to Christ, that you're setting up a foundation where they can just build upon instead of having to tear it down and rebuild. Yeah. Uh, again, I, uh, I concur with my wife. Uh, the reason that it's so important that um, that we establish our children's ministry on the truth of God's Word, uh, a biblical, God-centered, Christ-exalting uh, ministry for our children is, is imperative. Uh, and I'm excited about, like Angie said, uh, uh, I, like her, grew up in a, uh, in a church, but it wasn't really uh, a God-centered uh, environment. And so... To see a children's ministry that is investing in children at an early age, to know that uh, from, like Angie said, age one, two, three, and on, that they're already hearing about the truth of God and that the Bible is seen as authority uh, and that all of God's spoken word is about Jesus Christ. For the kids to understand that at such a young age, believe it and to be trained in that, I'm excited about what the next generation uh, will look like uh, and what their leadership will look like when they're our age in the life of the church. Their theological emphasis, which is uh, reform, Calvinistic, and biblical also, of course. But I, I like that very, very much. Without, without Bible, we cannot have, we cannot talk about ministry, children ministry or any kind of ministry in the church. With Bible, we can talk about almost everything in the church, and we we should do talk about Bible, have Bibles in our ministries. Well, not so well articulated uh, 
program like you have, but uh, I hope that introducing this new curricula this year or the, ne or the next year, we will have also the, this uh, memory versus program memorization, yes. Okay. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Working with kids in my church, um, we have, oh, we've had the kids come to know him more, and we we always have a PowerPoint in our church, so they really get um, that drilled into their heads a truth about God's word. And then one time I had a young boy, he was just so excited about what he was learning. He when he prayed at the end of class during the small group time. He just basically repeated what we had taught him all Sunday and I wish I could have recorded the prayer because it was an amazing prayer. Um, just reinstated what we had taught him and what the Lord had taught him specifically. I think if we don't build it on biblical foundation, if we don't build it on God, it wavers. And like the session where we get tossed he was talking about being tossed to and fro. I, I can see, yeah, if we aren't on sol solid foundation, uh, then Satan just takes us and tosses us to and fro. Oh, you, you don't know this well. <laughs> Here you go and back and forth. We go and we need that stability so that we don't get worn out. We don't become frail and, and sad and, he ta and then Satan attacks our hearts. Well, for our Bible memory program in our church, um, currently we are running Awana. So the kids are encouraged to go through their books and memorize verses as many as they can in a week. And for some of them, come with three or four. Some of them do not come with any, but we need to encourage them to keep learning more of God's word and, and pray for them. More general. <laughs> um, well, just in teaching the Lord's Word to the young women that I work with, I've just it's been so beautiful to see how He is faithful, how, like in Isaiah 55, how His Word doesn't return void, and to see Him bring that alive in their lives through the years and then just base their lives on that has been sweet to see Him bring the eternal fruit. <laughs> I really believe it's so important to give them the biblical foundation because that's that's our life. You know, that is what God has given us to reveal Himself to us, to reveal um, who we should be, how He wants us to live, and it's it's what's alive and active and the only thing that changes hearts. So. Mm -hmm. What I love about the CDG materials is that they're so focused on Jesus and on the Word. And you can't go wrong with that. It's <laughs> a good question. Um, yeah. Um, as far as Bible memory, just really wanting to encourage young women to implement it into their lives in a way that they can carry it through their whole life. And so encouraging them to take the, the things that God is doing in their hearts with them, to memorize that, and then implement it into their daily living has been really a powerful way that we've seen God transform hearts. So. Um, the, some of the things they'll say, the kids, um, that they just learn and how much um, you come in contact with them and how much they love to come. Um, especially there was a boy named Michael and he has autism and he just loves coming. Um, he can't talk or anything but 
the more he came and his sister would come every time they would see me they would just give me hugs and I knew that was God's work because they were truly learning the word and in that they kept bringing their parents and their parents started coming to church and so that they would just love to come to church and whenever they would see the building they knew what they were going to do and they knew that that they were going to learn God's word. I'm learning to take back memorization to have the kids more uh, memorize and for me to memorize the word and for us to learn together but also um, to um, just bring the kids in uni and be unified in the group and so that we can just come together as one and that the kids truly were going to lead their parents and that's a great picture to see so I'm excited for that. Okay. The reason for the a biblical foundation for the kids is because as they grow up, they're going to, if they start memorizing the word and it's biblical and they know exactly what the word says and what in the world it tells us and the difference of that, it's going to make a difference on them as growing up of just being able to recite those memory verses and be able to um, recall on that and be able to um, just just call on the Lord and they'll be able to know exactly what's going to be thrown them out in the world and exactly know what the Word tells them about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right now we're trying to do kind of like a reward system where you memorize the memory verse, we're going to have a huge pizza party. Um, we have a general store where it's you get tokens and you get to go buy stuff. So that's another thing is where if they memorize so many verses and stuff that they can get tokens or we're going to have parties for them and reward them with that not only because it's good and let them know why they're memorizing it but to get a reward afterwards so they can be more excited and more motivated to do that. <laughs> Bible memory programs, well we actually um, we try to encourage our children to memory the Bibles but we don't have a program in particular, you know, I cannot name one in particular. Okay. Well, um, really, uh, the, the centeredness uh, of, the, of the Bible, that's what I really love from, from your program, that it, it is not something that, you know, that is focusing on man, on, on man's ideas, but basically on what God says about, about man and about his own glory. That's, you know, that's remarkable. Yeah. Why is it important that a children's program would be built on Oh, of course. It's a, it's a, why is it important? It is important because, you know, God's our creator and he's the one who, who determines what, what should be. And uh, we cannot, you know, try to build a, a, the next generation or equip the next generation on our, based on our ideas, but based on the word of God. So it is important because God says so and then we have to follow his directions. And if you were as peaceful as you just try to look mostly just at Andrew. Did I look over at you? No, but you oh. looked everywhere else. Oh, really? Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> um, um, thinking of a particular story, I mean, uh, is difficult. Um, uh, I think just the overall joy, a lot of our ministry at the church where, uh, where I serve uh, is done to kids that are brought in on vans or buses and so uh, they don't have uh, the background uh, that I was blessed to be brought up in and so just when they come to the point of where they're starting to get it uh, and they're, they're understanding who they are and who God is and, uh, and just coming to grips with what God did in providing salvation through Jesus Christ uh, and, uh, and then seeing that move from them through a family. I think there's no greater joy in life than, than watching that happen. There's no other firm foundation than for a program to be built on the scriptures. So anything else, uh, any other thing else is probably worldly wisdom and, and and doomed to fail, uh, ultimately. So the scriptures are our sure foundation and footing for everything we do, and that's the blessing of children desiring God and the literature that comes from it. Okay. Um, how 
how is the CDG materials impacting your main life? I never students and as talk. Well, I guess you guys have to talk. As a uh, student, then. As a student. Well, you can think of something. Um, I'll help you out this time. Um, I guess for me, I went through the curriculum. Okay, stop. Don't cut. Okay. Don't keep that. Okay. Um, wait, what was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so CDG curriculum has influenced my life um, just because I've gone through it and now I'm also teaching it, and it's been really cool just to see how I knew a lot of that theology, though I couldn't put words on it. Like I learned about election, but I had no clue how what it was called. But I knew that God chose people, and at a really young age, and so that was really cool just to have that foundation. Um, to go into life with that and now teaching it has been really cool and just encouraging and seeing it at a different level um, and God always times the lessons just perfectly for what I need with my life like I'm going through I stand in awe which is a curriculum about the Bible for kindergarten and first graders and um, I was going through a really crazy week with school and it was just hectic and I was exhausted and I got to the lesson and I was it was the Bible is our hope and our endurance and that was just what I needed to hear that week and just like okay God I'm clinging to you um, to get me through this week and clinging to your word so just, CDG curriculum has been so encouraging just from both aspects so. and I my story is similar to Courtney's as well I um, have gone through it both as a student and as a small group leader and um, this year I'm teaching um, my purpose will stand to fifth and sixth graders um, it's on the providence of God and it's just been very useful to me um, just in what's been going on in my life and just to see how mm -hmm. um, even simple truths that I'm teaching to younger kids can be so applicable to my life as well. Mm -hmm. Taught a CDG curriculum, but going through it as a student. Do you start over? Yep. Okay. For me, I've never taught the CDG curriculum, mm -hmm. but going through it as a student, I remember mm -hmm. the one that has impacted me the most, I think, is the names of God and just learning how wonderful and amazing God really is and how to describe him you have to have so many names. It's just amazing. Hmm. Please just start this time. Please go ahead. <laughs> um, Bible memory has just been very um, important to me and um, just hiding God's word in my heart. Um, because then when I'm going through a situation where I need encouragement, it's already there. I already know the mm -hmm. verses, um, and I can encur be encouraged even when I don't have my Bible with me at that moment. Mm -hmm. For me, it's been also the same as Elise, just been really encouraging um, in moments where I didn't have my Bible. Um, and just, I'm really encouraged by the way Bethlehem promotes Bible memory um, and just makes that kind of like a standard like oh, everyone memorizes the Bible and you're kind of a weirdo if you don't and which isn't a bad thing um, and that's just been really cool just be in that atmosphere and just like be challenged to memorize scripture and I remember one time um, when I was maybe like 10, 11, 12 I was watching a movie with my family and I I was terrified of this movie. I don't remember what it was, but it was really scary at that moment in time in my life. And I had to go upstairs to go to the bathroom. And it was like nighttime, and I was like terrified. My family's all downstairs. And I was in the bathroom, and the first verse that came to mind was Psalm 56, 3, when I'm afraid I'll trust in God, and God whose word I praise, what can man do to me? And that was just the first time that a verse that I had memorized had uh, just come to me when I needed it, and I was in need of encouragement from God, and just having that at such a young age, and just now, over and over again, verses come through, or come to me when I need them, because I have them memorized, and so that's just been really encouraging to have. Memorizing scripture has been beneficial to me <coughs> by helping me when I'm praying, or with a friend, or just on my own, just meditating on scripture at night or in the morning when I don't have anything else going on and the light is off, trying to go to sleep. It's just very helpful to keep my mind occupied with scripture verses and really knowing, you know, how God works in our life. Thank you. Is there any ministry? Do you have any stories that you can share about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I think one of the biggest memories I've had in teaching God's Word to children is um, thinking back to times when I'm in a small group and I'm teaching them and how quickly they understand these truths and the fact that they see it as one picture, one tapestry. They see the Bible as Jesus. They see, they see him as precious and I, I'm blessed by um, the fact that the CDG curriculum emphasizes the fact that Jesus is the center of every story. Yeah, one story I have to just, I don't know, maybe even encourage people that feel like they aren't doing very much with their group or whatever, is just the way, like some of what Andrew said, when you teach children, they, you need to focus on Christ. And so that's what I tried to do with my small group once. Um, one year I led it first and second grade. And so I just, that was, I tried to have that as a focus often. And a lot of times it just didn't seem like there was too much response, but we just need to keep on reminding them. And I think they're learning more than we realize. I guess my memory of working with kids is just, just how those, just the sweetness of just how they're sincere and just love the Bible stories and that they get it, they get these core truths and I think that's really sweet. Yeah. So how, how has that impacted your life? <laughs> Use original questions. <laughs> Besides the Bible, has most influenced your spiritual life? Think of one. Or influence like your children's ministry, or however you want to go with it. I guess one book that has uh, impacted me in ministry is probably, well, there's several, but probably starting off with "Don't Waste Your Life" by John Piper. Tell us how. Oh. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> 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 Um, don't Waste Your Life has impacted me because I don't want to waste the years that God has given me just pursuing my own gain. I want to serve Him by serving others. Um, this isn't really a book, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the, the article Pastor John wrote on being a spiritual leader um, it was actually at a different conference, but I read that and it really, I mean, I think it kind of revolutionized my, just how I meet with God on my own, because I realized that his word should be central and it needs to be the food for my soul. So it's not exactly a book. There's a good book that I read though that really did change my life. <laughs> um, that, that's uh, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. Read it and you'll find out why. <laughs> Maybe. Good book. I think one of the books that's impacted my life a lot was Desiring God. Mm. I think um, I think it's changed my foundation in that sense where it's God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. Mm -hmm. And I think it became a passion in a sense rather than a white knuckle hold on tight kind of thing. So I think that's probably touched my life more than any other book. Besides the <laughs>